All right, our last topic we'll talk about this week is goodness of fit and ANOVA. So first we'll start off with goodness of fit. Goodness of fit is a great way to kind of do a hypothesis on categorical data using percentages. And we want to know if there's a difference um, in this categorical data or if it is the same. So our null, the distribution occurs, um, is as stated, right? So what we believe to be true, and then the alternative is is not the same. So for for goodness of fit, we will look to see are things the same or not the same, and they don't have to be equal per se. It's more of what does uh, everyone to believe to be true, just like we do in hypothesis testing. Hypothesis testing always goes with what do we believe to be true, right? So like one of the homework problems is about the number of uh, percentage of colors in candy bag, right? So let's talk about how to use technology to do this. So with goodness of fit, we're gonna do what we use a chi-squared test. And chi-squared kind of looks like a normal, but it has a long right tail. Um, so for this one, if you click on the blue box like we've been doing, they give you the colors of candies in a bag, right? And it has their frequencies, and it has what the company says is the proportion of that candies per bag. Now, this problem, doesn't let you just open up and slide crunch Excel. So what I did is I opened, I typed it up into Excel here. So I just typed all the frequencies and then I typed all the probabilities. So to do a Guinness effect test, you have to do the expected, right? I'm gonna close this out and this back up. So to find expected, you take the frequency, I'm sorry, the probability and you multiply it by the total. So in Excel, let me get rid of this. If you, like we said before, if you highlight all the data and you hit the summation key, it will sum up your data. So in this problem from mine, and we have 395 candies. And then here is the probability of each candy. So to find the expected, I took the probability and multiplied it by the frequency. Remember in Excel, if you put in dollar signs, that locks the cell. And then I can just click and drag this all the way through. And you can see each one of these found my expected. And then I went in here and I typed in my expected in. If you want to continue this problem using Excel or use the calculations by hand, we got to calculate our test statistics. So a chi-squared, that's what it looks like, a little cursive X and a squared. The zero just means the test statistic, like it has all of course. So to find the chi-squared test statistic first, you have to take your frequency, subtract your expected, square it, Right, so that way it's always positive, and then divide by your expected. And I calculated that all the way through, and then your test statistic is just the sum of all those. So there's my test statistic. If you want to find the p-value, remember, and some of you are still kind of missing this up, missing this concept, we reject the null if we have a very small p-value, le lower than the level of significance. So in this case, our level of significance alpha is 0.05, and my p-value in this case, if I run it to three decimal places, is 0 0.002. You can see Excel goes way further than that out, but run it to three, 0 0.02. Therefore, 0 0.002 is much less than 0 0.05. So we are gonna reject the null that these are the proper probabilities of the candies and say that they are definitely not, all right? Now, if you wanna be able to calculate p-values in Excel, you can do a chi-squared test where you first highlight all your frequencies comma, then you're expected, and just hit enter and they'll calculate it. Or, because we know it is a chi-squared distribution, we can put chi-squared distribution in Excel, take our, desk, our test statistic, our degrees of freedom, which is n minus one, and it's not your frequency, it's how many categories you have. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six categories, therefore our expected value is five. Always put a one in. Now, what's different, every other test we have done, it's always been a left tail test, right? Well, in chi-squared for some long reason, they do a right tail, that's why I have this one minus in there. So you have to put one minus when you do chi-squared to find p-value. And there is the same value. If you want to use stack crunch, oh, let me shrink this down because I want it back so we can compare our results. I can open up a stack crunch. And you can either type your data into stack crunch or because I've already done it, I will highlight my, fre uh, my frequency and probability, 
copy that, paste it here. So this was my frequency. This is my probability. And I click on stat, and here is goodness of fit. And again, we're doing a chi-squared test. My observed is my frequency. My expected is a probability. And then I want to display my expected. And there is my expected. If I bring back up my XL, you see 5135, 5135, 55, 55. You get the same values. Also, there's my test statistic. Chi-squared distribution, that here's your test statistic, same numbers. There's my p-value, and there's my p-value. They went to the four, mine's way out, way past four, but 0 0.00157 is 0 0.0016. Run to the three decimal places, we're back to the 0 0.002. So here's how you can use technology, either Excel to do some of the calculations for you, or you can create the formulas for you that like to do things by hand, or StatCrunch can do it for you as well. So goodness of fit, again, is a good way of comparing uh, categorical data based on percentages. And ANOVA is our next one thing we can talk about, which stands for Analysis of Variance. Come here, let's look at problem eight. So for ANOVA, we will assume everything to be equal for the null, and the alternative is at least one is different. And we're looking at means here again. Now, with ANOVA, you don't know which mean is different. All you know is at least one is different. So our null is always equals, and our alternative is at least one is different. So, and there, there are requirements. Um, I've listed the pages as well as in the announcements for the acquired requirements to do ANOVA. Um, typically want the variances to be the same. They've got to come from a normal distribution. You have to have K samples from each dis distribution. Um, it's all kind of there in the announcement. And I also put the page, uh, what section of the e-text it's in. But this one I'm going to open up in. Stat Crunch, because it allows me to, so I don't have to type it all into Excel. I go to Stat, I go to, where are you at? Nova, and we're doing one way ANOVA. I highlight all my columns, my hold and shift, because I'm on a Mac, um, and then I can hit a compute. And again, this is just like we did before, you can create dot plots, residuals, and all that stuff to make sure everything is distributed. So here are our results. What was that? All right, so we're coming through here. My F statistic is 427, right? And that is, where is my F statistic? Did I click on the wrong thing? Oh, right there, the, where, where it says F stat. So F statistic uh, is your F stat, 0.427, and right below it is my P value. So therefore you see my P value is large in this case. So therefore I will not reject the null. So there is insufficient evidence to reject the null. Thus we can say, include the means are different at the significance levels. Remember, we'll do this real quick. We've done this a few classes now, how to draw box plots. So I close this out, click on stat, I'm sorry, click on graph, go to box plot. Again, highlight my data. I want the median. I would like fences for my outliers as well. I like my box, box plots drawn horizontally, so I always check that box. I click compute, and now I can compare my graphs to theirs. And as you can see, you know, the, ah, where'd you go? Shrink this down. Kind of all, this one's a little skewed, skewed. But you can look at the box plots and kind of compare your results, which should come out to the same conclusions as you did in using the hypothesis testing. All right, use this week to get caught up. It's been a fun, fast paced course, but I've enjoyed kind of getting to know you as best we can in our online environment. Good luck with all your future classes, and you may reach out to me anytime you want to talk statistics or anything else. Thank you again for, again for a wonderful course. Good luck on the final.